Hello, friends. Here's a quick primer on whole system quality from the Institute of Healthcare Improvement. This all depends on distributed compassionate leadership. So centralized leadership might be kind of an old model that you're used to. And distributed leadership has leaders in all different pockets of the system, in the clinics, in the hospitals, in the transport system, um, everywhere. You can see here on this current state of improvement that right now we have people firefighting in silos. Uh, when you do something cool, you innovate, you fix a problem, uh, it's generally in the silo. It doesn't really get shared. There are some pilots, and then of course the pilots go, the pilots go to go to just they just die after you do the pilots. So we got pilotitis, we got pilots dying, we got um, innovations that are happening in silo. Nobody communicates what happens. It's kind of like we wait for problems to come up and then we firefight them. So whole system quality involves a increase in the quality planning, being more deliberate about designing our infrastructure, dividing our connecting our systems, connecting and breaking down those silos so that people are working together. And then we have shared language for improvement. It's a reduction of the old command and control methodology that has not been working. It's a reduction in that quality assurance model, but with some sustained uh, quality assurance. We have increase in quality planning, which really talks about increasing infrastructure. And we have quality improvement to improve our systems, the metrics that, that matter, that tell us that our system is performing well, and then controlling that quality at the range that we want it to be. We know that every person who leads from uh, where they are in the system has a different perspective on the system. In this diagram, this person can see the cornflakes, cannot really see the other person. This person over here can't see the sugar cubes, for example, or whatever that is. Um, so, uh, what does it look like? People have a different line of sight. A top-down view is kind of like this, a systems schematic. So we recognize that people have different points of view. And so it's so important that we have these conversations in whole system quality about what matters to you. We ask the patients this, the patient advocates, the politicians maybe, should be the voice of, of what matters to you from the people. So from direct care lines, the staff, clinicians, leaders, hospital leaders, site medical directors, executive directors, we're all having these conversations, what matters to you. The system is comprised of the patient, their caregivers, their primary care physicians and practitioners, their, all, all of their allied health, the community-based specialists, um, other facilities, long-term care, and hospitals. And at every one of these locations with the system, there ought to be a shared approach for improvement and also a, a planning for quality in each of these to get ahead, to be proactive rather than putting out the fires. We enable what matters to people, really prioritizing what matters to them rather than having a stiff uh, strategy that isn't adaptive to the needs of what's coming up. We use the model for improvement, which is a common strategy realizing what we want to improve in, in each area, how will we know that there's an improvement and what changes we can make. When we've had these conversations in British Columbia in the past, the concepts of improved respect in the system, improved safety, improved accessibility, improved appropriateness of care, improved effectiveness, increased equity, and improved efficiency have all come up as what matters to people. The quintuple aim has five things uh, generally the, the line up with what matters, improved health, improving the health professional uh, experience, the care team well-being, the patient experience, and also uh, reducing uh, waste or resource stewardship improvement, advancing health equity again, and planetary health. So these are what matter to people. And we use data visualization to try to figure out, get systems into our, our area of control. We try to figure out what are the biggest levers of control that influence system performance, and then we try to improve it and try to reduce variation. Reducing variation is a big part of high quality, like because you got a quality parameters, and if we can get to this particular area in the, in the A1C control, in the rate of screening for different diseases, then we're, we decide that that likely contributes to quality. And we can use these these types of data visualization over time for any of these particular quintuple aim metrics or these dimensions of quality metrics, efficiency, effectiveness, safety, et cetera. You can monitor those. And 
it, it ought to be that in our quality planning, we build an infrastructure where each team has data visualization around each of these. And this is an example of that award. The falls are displayed at the ward and every person working on the team has an idea that their efforts are impacting this particular metric. And then we have, we have the, we have these innovations that demonstrate results and it pulls more people in. We build capability by giving them the tools of the of data visualization, the tools of the model for improvement, the frameworks, and we inspire people to, to, ch to change because it's in alignment with their values. So there's what matters to them is baked into every part of the system design. And that's a big part of the quality planning. So quality planning, and then we got quality improvement, watching those metrics improve, and then we narrow the the system performance to keep the quality high in that in this area where there's reduced variation. So that in a nutshell is a, is a little bit of uh, whole system quality. Look forward to speaking more about this to you with you um, at the retreat.